What is up all my car people out there? Today we're going to be talking about some Mazda news today. And Mazda released a press release saying that they're going to announce uh, three new SUVs for the North American market. <clears throat> and those three SUVs are going to be the Mazda CX-50, CX-70, and also the CX-90. So let's just go talk about the CX-50 first. So in November, Mazda is going to reveal this crossover and is going to join the lineup in the United States and Canada, as I said before. And it's going to share a platform with uh, other Mazda vehicles, such as the Mazda 3 and the Mazda CX-30. And they're talking about how it's going to feature enhanced all-wheel drive. And for this vehicle, um, all-wheel drive is going to come standard. And as well as uh, all of uh, Mazda's other CX products. And production of this vehicle is going to begin in January uh, 2022 and the uh, Mazda Toyota factory in Huntsville in Alabama. They say that this vehicle is going to feature, um, going to be marketed to people with active lifestyles, meaning that's probably going to have a lot of plastic cladding rather than just a uh, body colored, um, you know, fender flares or whatever. Um, and they kind of do this a little bit with the Mazda CX-5. So we know it's going to be front way, front wheel drive based, all wheel drive. Um, it's going to be bigger than the CX-5, more than likely. So cladding, and we know the all-wheel drive is going to be standard. We do have some sketches of this Mazda CX-50. Uh, as we can see in this design, it does look like it will have um, cladding, as I said before. And it looks pretty similar in terms of the front fascia uh, towards the CX-5. Uh, uh, at least the 2023 model, which I'll show you guys later. And speaking of the Mazda CX-5, uh, this CX-50 will be sold alongside uh, the Mazda CX-5. So I think it'll be a situation of the Mazda CX-3 versus Mazda CX-30, uh, where eventually the CX-3 was eventually phased out by Mazda. And I think um, the CX-5 will definitely be phased out in favor of the CX-50. And regarding the CX-5, Mazda talked about how they'll continually update the vehicle. So I feel like... Uh, the CX-50 would more than likely get like a newer, better interior. So I feel like the CX-5 would likely follow uh, with a similar technology like they've been doing um, compared uh, to different models of the CX-5. So that's a good thing that they're at least keeping it updated for their customers. And if we took a look at Mazda's uh, official website, we can see an enhanced uh, Mazda CX-5 that's going to be here for 2023. And a lot of it's basically the same. Um as the prior vehicle. Uh, the main difference here is based on the exterior front is mainly the headlights. They're doing uh, more of a double um, daytime running light design here. And if you look at the other shots that they have here, lots of the interior bits, they look pretty similar. So expect the CX-5 to be mostly the same vehicle as you probably already knew. So now let's get into the CX-70 and the CX-90. So th they'll uh, introduce these new platforms as well. Um, it's going to be a larger platform. The CX-90 is going to be followed by the CX-70. So the CX-90 is going to be first. And these vehicles, this is where it gets interesting because these vehicles will feature Mazda's new longitudinal architecture. And it'll also introduce their new turbocharged straight sixes to these cars. They're also talking about how they'll have plug-in hybrid models. Um, and I think that the plug-in hybrid market is getting pretty interesting with vehicles like the RAV4 Prime and stuff like that. And not only that, remember that Mazda has partnered with Toyota. I think Toyota owns like 20% of Mazda or something like that. So they can even get hybrid options from that company. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with these hybrid options. The CX-90 is supposed to have three rows of seats and the CX-70 is going to be offering two rows of seats. So that's going to be kind of interesting because CX-50 is like, the CX-50 and also the CX-5 are also two-row vehicles. So wouldn't it make sense for them to offer the CX-70 with three rows? But I don't know. I don't work at Mazda, so I don't make these decisions. But it's just my thought process here. Um, and that also might tell me, um, will the CX-90 be like look completely different from a CX-70? Or will a CX-70 look like a takedown version of a CX-90, if you know what I'm trying to say? Kind of like a Honda Pilot versus Passport, if you know what I mean. They also talk, go into a little bit about these, um, what they're going to do for other markets such as Europe and Asia. And they're going to do a CX-60 and also a CX-80. And these will be plug-in hybrids with straight four gasoline engines. 
and the new straight six um, generation of the Skyactiv X technology. The Skyactiv D will also be available on these vehicles as well. Um, they also talk about how the MX thirty will be will feature um, a plug in hybrid using rotary, but that's not too important right now. So yeah, these vehicles are pretty interesting. We know that the CX-90 and CX-70 are going to be rear-wheel drive based, but they'll offer, but all-wheel drive will be standard. So it doesn't make, um, so it's not taking too much away from the CX-50, making it like a completely, like a really completely different vehicle because all of these vehicles are using uh, all-wheel drive. Just one will be front-wheel drive, one will be rear-wheel drive based. And I've also heard some rumblings about the Mazda 6 replacement. Um, so we can get like, so it's going to be based on like the Vision Coupe, but offer five seats instead of four, is what I'm hearing. And it also uses straight six Skyactiv-X to gasoline technology with a 48 volt mod hybrid um, setup. So this is going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I think the Vision Coupe looks really beautiful, a very sexy car. Uh, so hopefully they can make, make it just like that, but in a sedan form. And I would even like to see a coupe form of it, like that design is just... It would just work with both a sedan and a coupe. And they also talked about like how they also patented a twin turbo setup. So that can be like 400 plus horsepower uh, in that car. So that would just be awesome to see, especially with how sedans are dying off. So like the TL, the Type S is disappointing uh, from what I hear. The Stinger's canceled. The K7's canceled uh, slash Cadenza. It that's kind of disappointing because the K7 that they get in Korea looks pretty compelling to be honest. Uh, the 300's old, the Dodge Charger, I probably wouldn't get it if it didn't have a V8. Um, Avalon died. They can even work with Toyota and do like a new super collab with like their new twin turbo straight six that they patented um, and that would be awesome. They can even do like an IS replacement because um, they're going to have to re completely redesign it eventually. Um, or even something with like a GS, but I don't know. But yeah, Mazda is doing real good things. I think these vehicles will slot in between like, of course, the premium segment. So like you can have like BMW um, German performance here, but pay just a little more than your average Japanese mainstream markets, which I think is a good thing. And I think with many brands such as like Acura, Acura or um, such as like Acura who fail to go rear wheel drive, and uh, Lexus has many front-wheel drive vehicles. I think this offers something that those two don't. So this would be kind of more in line, uh, more competitive like with Genesis, uh, for example. So I think um, they're doing really great things here. I don't think they'll really screw up with the CX-50 if it's just going to be an upgraded version of a C, kind of basically kind of like an updated version of a CX-5. It'll only get better and the CX-5 is really good. So. I think they'll be pretty successful going forward and I'm hoping, happy to see um, what they're going to do next. But like, subscribe the video, um, leave a comment below, tell me what you think. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.